Mudman 89 here. So, it's been a long, long time since I have posted about the Super Dually. Where has the Super Dually been and why have you not gotten an update? Long story short, got married, wife joined the Air Force, moved to Florida, bunch of stuff went there. This truck hauled all of our stuff from North Carolina to Florida on its maiden voyage. Um, yeah, I think in one of my videos I did an update on everything that's happened with the Super Dually. Um, as far as what I did with the front end and the sway bar and stuff. I mean, it's literally been that long. It's been like two years since I posted on this thing. So, what has happened? Well, not much. It's basically remained stock. Um, you can see it's still got the same tires and wheels and everything on it. Um, picked up this soft topper for a, from an 18 Duramax Dually. Um, and it fit perfectly. Literally the exact same size bed as a 18 dually i know it doesn't look like it these trucks look much smaller than their new stuff but it's it's all body flare and door panels it's literally all it is um so <sighs> what has happened with the dually nothing nothing really has happened with the dually um as far as the interior i mean i dynamited everything like i said in the one video um Basically the interior is still the same as it always has been. Uh, brand new carpet and I put some glow shift gauges up here. Now, let's talk about some of the new stuff that is coming. Recently I have sold the home that I'm currently at. I have made quite a bit of money. Enough money that I'm pulling the engine out of this. We're going probably with the K27 um, Borg Warner Turbo. We're gonna go with a pack um, exhaust brake. We're gonna do some fueling upgrades. Um, Power Driven Diesel's got a really cool AFC live system where you can basically adjust your fuel delivery on the fly, and that's really, really cool. Um, probably going with that. We are gonna Raptor liner this as well. I also found some of those cheapy fender flares for 150 bucks that I'm gonna make fit on the dually because I need a little bit more fender up front. Don't get me wrong, I like the stock fenders, but I'd like it if my tire was, you know, fully covered. And I think those cheapy pocket fender flares will do it and they'll give me like an extra inch or so. Um, as far as the truck, the truck's been amazing. Haven't really put a lot of miles on it. That's mostly because the cluster sucks. I hate GMT 400 clusters. I hate their dashboards, but I love the trucks. Um, I mean, I still love the trucks, but it also come and swapped it, manual swapped it. I pretty much got rid of everything. Okay, I like the way it looks. Leave me alone, all right? Aesthetics matter too. Uh, I not a MBRP hexagonal tip. Okay, there. I, that was upgrade, you know. Um, let me explain. The cluster has always been a problem. The gas gauge has never worked. The speedometer has always been off. I even did, reprogrammed the VSS um, buffer and it's st still wrong. I think the stepper motor is just out of um, tune. You know, it doesn't matter what the voltage is. The voltage reading could be correct, but if the stepper motor is bad, it's going to display a false reading. And if you got a GMT 400, you know what I'm talking about. These things suck. Um, I bought, and it should be here this week, I bought one of the um, Autometer Envision clusters. Yes, the LCD, super duper amazing thing. Um, turns out when I bought my tachometer, it's the Autometer 2888. It is the diesel um, tachometer. It has its own little sensor that it comes with. So it actually sits on your alternator. Um, it tells you to rev it up to a certain RPM. Um, and then it tells you to put something, you can buy one of those little cheap $20 um, laser tachometer reader things off of Amazon and then you can just scan your um, crank once you get to that RPM you actually turn a, a little dial on the back of the gauge and it will actually set it to where it needs to be and it's worked perfectly like where this truck's supposed to defuel at and where it's RPM cut off um, as far as you know like 3000 RPM roughly is what it its rev limit is. I mean, it's been pretty accurate. I will say that. Um, idles around 700 RPM, which is right there in line with what it's supposed to be. So no complaints with the autometer gauge, but autometer has recently come out with a diesel tachometer um, reader thing. I, basically, it's everything that the gauge is without the gauge. 
and you can use whatever gauge you want. So I ordered one of those, so I should be able to use this new Envision LCD display and everything should work. Also, the next upgrade we're gonna do is gonna be the Halo 9 9 inch Alpine display. Not gonna do the, the $1,000 one, it's like the $600 one, but that's gonna go in that den slot and that's gonna be super cool because I really like Android Auto. I have a 2018 RAM as well and I love my Android Auto. I cannot live without it. <sighs> Other thing, the interior. All these seats are coming out, center seats coming out. I'm going with LTZ um, seats out of a 2018 Silverado or GMC Sierra, it doesn't really matter. Front and rear, we're gonna have heated and cooled front seats and we're gonna have um, heated rear seats, which I believe they had heated rear seats. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I don't care if I have heated rear seats or not. Um, center console, we're gonna go with the center seat, the one that's got the big flip up thing, because I love that thing. You can put all the stuff in the bottom, then you can flip it up, it's a third seat, and then you flip it back down, then you got all the stuff in the top. Way more capacity than that thing. So super excited to get those seats. They run about 1500 bucks in this area, so that's cool. Um, all this carpet felt padding stuff is gonna be taken out and I'm gonna put probably black leather up here. Don't know what I'm gonna do down here. Don't really wanna put leather down here because this is obviously a kick panel. Probably Raptor liner that. You know, because I mean, why not? That makes sense to me. Just you know, pull this felt off and then cover it with something and then Raptor liner it. Other than that, um, have AC now, which gets warmer as you drive. So that's confusing as hell. Um, thinking I have a restriction, um, you can see I have a fair bit of condensation on my low side. I have my low side switch called coldhose.com. They've been super helpful about this. Um, got the Cummins AC compressor still. Everything's new. These, so I bought this line and the high side line are for this truck. And then I just bought the fittings for this compressor with the adapter and then just cut the brand new hoses and then had these fittings put on and had these had this one custom end welded here so it was actually super simple and it was super cheap to do um i just had this one problem like i said um my fans are running continuously right now because i don't have a trinary switch and running down the road the ac gets warm the slower you go the better it gets and i'm just like that's very strange don't know if it's overcharged or what I haven't really figured that out. I know it's factory, it's two pounds. Didn't really cut much hose off of it um, when we added the new ends. So, I don't know. I have no idea. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, but, I mean, this engine has just been amazing. This has been the best swap just ever. This truck has just been great. It rides smoother and nicer than my 2018 Ram. Um, the super lift four inch springs have been amazing. No, I don't have a part number. Everybody always asks me that. I know they're for a 73 to 87 um, truck. Um, they're from super lift and they're four inches. That's what I know. I know they're made for the 454, so they, they're also diesel compatible as far as that goes because they're kind of the same weight. It's like 100 pounds difference. Um, I still need to pull this off and cut it here or flip it it needs to be flipped upside down four inches so that it can get to to this overload spring because <sighs> spider weather in my face because i did the shackle flip and this didn't move too much because there was nothing lifted from here but i need to flip that over because i want to still utilize that spring Probably get airbags later. Not super worried about that. I really want the pack brake because this thing is an absolute dump truck to try and stop. Um, oh, there is one more upgrade. Yes, this is the, the yard of toys. Okay, so long story short, I had a two, 2011 Toyota Tacoma that I bought. Almost had it paid off. Put a stage three URD supercharger system on it. Had a lot of fun with that. Spent a lot of money. Traded it in on the 2018 Ram shouldn't have put I don't want to talk about how much money I put into that truck let's just say I could have finished this a long time ago I don't want to talk about it then I bought a 2019 KTM 1290 Super Duke Adventure R 
I love this bike. It's so much fun. It is super, it's literally supercar fast from zero to 60. Tops out at 100. Oh, excuse me. And I just absolutely love it. Okay, so the other upgrade for the dually is this. I bought this literally a year ago and haven't put it on yet. I know, I'm just garbage. This is a $1,700 hydraulic steering assist kit from PSC. Yeah, yes. It is the, the big steering gearbox. It's the high volume pump from them with the remote reservoir, the ram, everything. I mean, it's even got the hind joints. I mean, it's literally just an amazing kit. And I even contacted Rough Stuff and got the offset tie rods because I'm having problems with my gigantic drag link, or not drag link, I'm sorry. My giant tie rod bar is running into my diff cover because it's so thick. So I bought the offset one so we can get rid of that. Oh, and this is my buddy's 2002 V10 F250 that I'm putting a six cent super lift on for. Pretty much almost done with this. It's just been a nightmare, there's so many stupid things that I've had to deal with. It's just annoying. And like, found out that his drive shaft's got a crack in it, so that, that pissed me off. Um, it didn't actually have a crack in it, it actually had like, anyways, one of the, not that, this one. Yeah, you can see right there. Boom, I got a crack. Woo, nice. Anyways, um, I'm gonna stop rambling, because I know that's annoying. We've hit the 10 minute mark. Yeah, it's like the window of opportunity to stop a video. This is, the Super Dually. Super Dually Part 2 is coming and it will be the actual Super Dually and not just some swap thing because I got a lot of hate on this truck about, oh, you didn't do anything and oh, it's still got the Dodge um, plate on the top. Well, well, you know what? It's just a fucking plate. Get over yourself. Anyways, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. A lot of stuff coming. Gotta move first. Gotta get everything there. And then we start this. Oh, P.S. I'm also going to do a 6BT swap on a 2004 F250, so stay tuned for that.